First, the bad news. SAP Business AI won't help you generate cubist versions of your family's holiday photos. But it will help you understand which supplier is best to help you roll out your plant-based packaging in Southeast Asia. Or identify the training your junior project manager needs to rise up the ranks. And automate repetitive tasks while you focus on big innovations. So you can be ready for the next opportunity. Revolutionary technology. Real-world results. That's SAP Business AI. We have the cure for cabin fever. There's lots to look forward to this month, from artsy plays to a film festival up north. Boise State Public Radio's George Prentice and Hey Boise's Blake Hunter are here to fill up your calendar. It's Thursday, February 1st. I'm Nick Kwa, and this is what Boise's talking about. So we got past the holiday chaos, uh, and now we're starting to experience more daylight. We're, we're turning a corner, even though um, I think folks generally feel that February might be the uh, hardest or worst winter month. Uh, Blake, is this helping with the winter blues for you? It does help. Yeah, very excited to announce uh, that on February 5th, the sun will rise before 8 a.m., and set after (laughs) 6 p.m. So uh, this is big news for us. We did it, folks. But also, I agree. I am one of the people that I I think February is honestly one of my worst months uh, most of the time, not to like set a somber tone. But I don't know. It's it's cabin fevery. There's definitely outdoor stuff to do, but it's still, it's just kind of the dregs of winter. And it's not always (laughs) my favorite. So I'm trying to get ahead of it trying to make some plans to make sure that I have some fun, uh, but not over overtax myself. Um, but at least one thing that I will be reminding myself every day is that we do have more light. Absolutely. So, George, um, I'm excited to sort of talk with you for the first time because I associate you, and maybe this is typecasting, with generally being a very chipper dude. Okay. Is February, like, what's your February energy? Like, are you are you kind of, uh, you know, cozy, warm, or are you like out in the town still in, in a cold winter February? A little bit of both, probably because my armor is so thick. I start my day at one in the morning. So daylight (laughs) is not the first thing uh, that I think of. But but that said, it is my job, right? I've got the blank slate. It's it's my job to convince you to get out of bed uh, and face another day. So, Blake, I've got really good news for you. Uh, By the end of February, sunrise will be 7.20 in the morning. Mm. Sunset will be 6.30. That's nearly 11 hours of daylight. Yeah. And fingers and toes crossed, Groundhog Day, of course, is February 2nd, which, of course, is nonsense. But sometimes (laughs) we pin our hopes on nonsense. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, but, yeah, Nick, I think, I mean, honestly, you got to make an effort. I Actually, so what o'clock in the morning is your wake-up call? Like, what did you go to bed? Oh, you know, you don't want to go there. <laughs> you don't want to go there. So, yeah. So I, uh, uh, Steve Inskeep, by the way, is, is, happens to be in, in Boise recently. And, and so I, we talked, right. And here he is in DC, the host of morning edition. And here I am this Yahoo in, in uh, Idaho uh, doing morning edition. And I was asking him about something and he said, well, what time do you get up? And it's like, ah, oh, do you want to go there? And he goes, no, no, no. What time do you get up? And I said, 1 a.m. And he said, you win. <laughs> <laughs> Let's sort of try to entertain the prospect of February with, with a little, um, you know, hop in our toes, or a mm-hmm. to use phrase. Um, so what are you looking forward to this month? This month? Uh, I am very excited uh, about a couple of uh, theatrical productions. I love plays. I love being in the presence of others. I missed it terribly during the pandemic. And I am particularly excited that two plays uh, that will be opening here in Boise. Mm. Uh, One is Wolf Girl. And this comes to us from Heidi Cray, playwright Heidi Cray. And this is going to be at the Danny Peterson Theater at the Morrison Center. It runs at February 8th through the 17th. Here's the elevator uh, uh, pitch. Quote, tired of feeling like a misfit, Maddie runs away from her hometown bullies and joins up with a wolf pack. The longer she stays, the more she identifies with her new family, becoming a wolf at ease in her skin for the first time. So 
Uh, that sounds interesting, intriguing, engaging, et cetera, but there are so many <laughs> layers to this. I think uh, a, a layer of sexual politics to mm -hmm. it. I love the fact that that uh, she is a girl uh, who uh, she's a conduit that can help heal the divide between humans and wolves. And I find that so intriguing here in Idaho. So again, uh, that's at the Danny Peterson Theater at the Morrison Center. But then over at Boise Contemporary Theater, they have a new play called Clyde's. And this was a pretty big hit in New York. Hmm. And Lynn Nottage is the only woman to have won the Pulitzer Prize for a drama twice. Hmm. And uh, so Clyde's is uh, takes place in a greasy spoon. It is a, a comedy drama, if you will. Oh, that explains all the uh, advertising I've seen from it downtown. Yeah. It's just uh, <laughs> yeah. food and uh, various illustrations. Right. There's like a club sandwich, but with like a knife stuck right through it as opposed to a toothpick. <laughs> yeah, I, I was getting hungry walking underneath that banner. <laughs> but when you think of the bear and the popularity mm -hmm. of that, I think it's very rich for drama. And it turns out that most of the employees at this uh, at Clyde's have done time. Uh, they are uh, former inmates, and they're either on parole or have just been released. So you have that uh, subtext on criminal justice, et cetera. So I'm really excited to see that. So that's over at BCT, and that runs through mid-February. Awesome. Um are they family-friendly plays, or, or is one maybe better than the other if you want to break your, like, eight-year-old kid or something? I don't think either is for eight-year-olds, mm -hmm. but that was my direct question to Heidi Cray. I'm thinking, gosh, I would think more than a few 14-year-old girls and boys would love to see Wolf Girl. Mm -hmm. And she said, yeah, it is kind of a YA. Uh, that said, yeah, but we approach some serious issues. Uh, Clyde's? It's uh, 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 yeah, there's going to be a fair amount of profanity there, and mm -hmm. they've got a I think a warning uh, at the box office or in their program, et cetera. Uh, but so it you know it depends on if you're a parent or guardian, uh, you manage that. Thank God that the legislature isn't telling us uh, how or where uh, we can go to see mm -hmm. plays. Uh, uh, with our kids, but uh, I think it's not for little ones, but I think it is for engaged folks. You know, as, as someone married to a person who was uh, whose father showed her eraser head at the age of seven, uh, you know, <laughs> right, go right. wild. Uh, yeah. Blake, yeah. Are, are you uh, are you interested in any of these plays? Like, what what are you looking for to do in this this February? I'm really excited about both of these plays. Um, Clyde is, if people went and saw Sweat last year, this is a sequel right. to Sweat, essentially. Mm. Um, so, you know, kind of set in like a steel town, you know, beginning a, of the op opioid crisis as well. There's so much kind of like corporate politics within it. And um, I'm really excited about it because I, I loved Sweat last year. Um, it was one of my favorite things that I saw at BCT. And then also Wolf Girl. Yeah, I love Heidi Cray. I featured her earlier this week in my, I had like a little article about like best books written by Boise authors from 2023. And uh, she has a book, if you want to check out some of her other work, 12 Lifetimes, a Century Cycle. Mm. So I'm, yeah, thrilled about that. I'm also very excited about like, just, you know, we'll, we'll get into movie territory as well. But um, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm planning on going to Story Story Night again. Mm. Uh, I've been I haven't been great about going to those consistently, but my boyfriend's a musical artist at this one this time, so I have to go. Awesome. Uh, but it'll be great. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I think that that's kind of my my recommendation to, to folks is to like let yourself just dwell within a story and not not take things too seriously. Curl up with some soup uh, if you're at home watching a good movie or reading a good book, uh, and then definitely go go support local theater. Um, and local storytellers. I think that's what it's all about this winter. Uh, so our producer, Evelyn Avizia, uh, she she's noticed people on social media, uh, in particular TikTok, talking about this concept of wintering. Like, uh, don't act like it's summer when it's winter. I do feel like the claustrophobia of being indoors a bunch, um, but it's still, you know, there's still a lot to do outdoors, even though the trails right now are closed. Um, I'm probably going to hit up the hot springs in Idaho City. Um, is there anything on outdoorsy on your list this month? Um, I... Also, February is a great month for hot springs. Um, I agree. I think that that's sometimes in February, that's the scope of what I can do outside. Um, and then I, I think that we you do got you do have to try to soak up the light as much as possible. So just like little green belt walks for me, but it'll, it'll still be really nice. Oh, that sounds perfect. So I've got two things, one in the light, one in the dark that are outside. Ooh. In the light, it's uh, Cupid's Undie Run 
which I love. Wait, say that uh, again. And it's February 10th this year. Yeah, it's which... Cupid's, Cupid's Undie Run. Got it. And it's exactly what it, it's hundreds, if not thousands of people in their underwear uh, just running through the streets of downtown Boise. Uh, for and it's a fundraiser and it's at noon. It's a high noon. So this year it's February 10th, and they start. <laughs> they start in Tom Graney's, right? Uh, so they start drinking at noon at uh, Tom Put Graney's at, at six. Then they <laughs> yeah. then they run around and it's so unofficial. I don't know. Maybe it's a mile or so. And of course they end up back at Tom Graney's. Uh, but it is uh, a fundraiser for Children's Tumor Foundation. Oh, that's wonderful. And I think that's kind of fun and crazy. Even if you're not running, you've got to be outside on February the 10th to, just to check this out and get your camera ready. Uh, and, and my outdoor outside thing is at the zoo. Mm. Uh, as you know, they probably they do a few adult-only events. And uh, in February, they're going to do Woo at the Zoo. And it's for 21 and over. It's in the evening. And, of course, you know, so you get the run of the zoo uh, when there's no kids around. And they're serving uh, beer and cider. And they've got appetizers. Uh, but, I mean, you know, animal magnetism. I mean, Absolutely. You know, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, sex in the zoo makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> so, and that's... I mean, it is uh, February. <laughs> it's February 15th. So, if you uh, if you blow Valentine's Day, and by the way, Valentine's Day is on a Wednesday uh, mm. this year, uh, you can you can do a make good on Thursday, February 15th at the zoo. Uh, is, that, is that your ideal date night situation, outdoors at the zoo? Well, the fact that they allow... They promote it as singles and couples. Ooh. So, yes. Oh, they should have like a matchmaking situation out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that sounds incredible. Zoo. Shipping can make or break a sale. So optimize how you ship your orders with ShipStation. They make it easy to automate and manage orders no matter how big your business grows. And they might even be able to help reduce shipping and warehouse costs. So optimize and keep up your momentum for growth with ShipStation. Sign up for your free 60-day trial now at ShipStation.com and use the code P-O-D. That's ShipStation.com with the code P-O-D. This episode is brought to you by Fidelity. Stock have too high a price? Buy a slice. Trade fractional shares of U.S. stocks and ETFs with zero commissions online. Visit Fidelity.com slash stocks by the slice. Sell orders are subject to an activity assessment fee from one cent to three cents per one thousand dollars of principal. Fidelity Brokerage Services LLC, member NYSE SIPC. Is there anything else that uh, that you can sort of uh, give me uh, in terms of a, a spark of life uh, in terms of outdoors, Blake? Yeah, there, there are a couple things. So the mm-hmm. Indian Creek Plaza um, is still open through February seventeenth, and then also, you know, you might want to start looking at your getting your tickets now uh but mccall has their winter carnival uh which is towards the end of the month oh, wonderful uh, nick i'm curious i know that you in january we we had a conversation that you wanted to get into like snowshoeing how's oh have yes. you gotten into that have you done that so not yet but that is the that is the day that i'm hoping to design around idaho city going out there oh, snowshoe nice. and then end it with the hot spring that's that's the hope and if all goes well uh that's gonna be in, in on the card soon that's a great day yeah George, a big snowshoe person? I am. I used to live in McCall, and I would snowshoe in Ponderosa Park. Uh, and, and my yellow lab uh, loved when I went snowshoeing. <laughs> and if if memory serves me right, they have specific trails for snowshoeing. Quite often, snowshoers are kind of on their own, or they share trails with snowmobilers, etc. I don't recommend that. Uh, but yeah, I picked it up, and it's 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 phenomenal physics, right? Of how the <laughs> snowshoes distribute your weight and you're standing on top of 10 feet of snow. Absolutely. And, it, you know, I, I have not skied. And to me, it's it feels like the right amount of uh, strapping a piece of wood onto your feet and uh, navigating <laughs> the snow. That's that's my speed. Uh, so, George, just to, just to sort of transition here a little bit, uh, George, you are um, the Morning Edition host here in, in Boise, but you're also, mm-hmm. I believe, the resident movie critic for Boise mm-hmm. Public Radio. Uh, just to sort of set the scene here, what is your like? What is your go-to movie theater? Like, where do you watch films? Uh, it's the flicks. Mm. It's uh, that's uh, that's a that's a pretty quick answer. Number one is that um, they, you know, this time of year, you know, when the Oscar nominations come out and people play catch up, the flicks has been. They don't have to play catch up, 
right? They've been they've been showing these films <laughs> uh, through most of the last year, and they continue to show them. And I think we're in a golden age of documentaries, mm -hmm. and I think mm -hmm. uh, nonfiction films are as good as any film, and that's where you're going to see a documentary. Um, but the movies that will that normally people talk about a week or a month from now, chances are they're playing at the flicks. So can I make a recommendation, by the way? Oh, please. I can guarantee that you will see, you will absolutely guarantee see an Oscar winner with before the Oscars go out. If you go to, um, they each year they bundle the Oscar nominated shorts. Right, so you, yeah. you see all the nominees, right. right? I love that. It is pound for pound the best film experience of the year. A hundred percent. Yeah. It's an annual tradition. Yeah. Animation shorts and live action shorts uh, together. And uh, this year in the live action shorts, one of the nominees is Wes Anderson. Wes Anderson made oh, a yeah. short film. Right. The Wonderful World of Henry Sugar. Which is also on Netflix, I should note. Yeah, and and but it's it's wonderful to see it with all the other shorts, mm -hmm, yeah, um, and and it's so much fun. So starting February sixteenth, they uh, bundle these together, and it is a blast. And I love that experience, and it uh, it kind of uh, is a highlight of February. You know, a lot of people say oh, I've seen all the Oscar nominees. Was well, like, no, <laughs> guess what? I can guarantee that you, one of these will win. So, mm -hmm. so, yeah. uh, and it's a lot of fun, and because yeah. every it's like waiting for a bus. Every twelve minutes, another one comes along. Note to families, though, just because something's an animated short does not mean that it's going to be right. uh, general audience friendly at all. Um, I mean, a couple of years ago, I remember there was like it seemed like every animated short was like dark. Um, but then yeah. last year they weren't. So just just kind of do a little bit of homework uh, if you've got kids and, and look ahead. So yeah, I'm really excited about that one. Um, I, I am definitely right now playing a little bit of Oscars catch up. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're recording this in, in late, late January. Uh, and actually all of us strangers opens tonight and I'm going mm -hmm. to see it. I'm so oh. excited. One of my favorite, favorite movies of this year or any year. And a movie that's far stranger than the trailer implies. I just want to flag that. It's a, I, it I enjoy the movie. Yep. Okay. Piece of Oscar trivia, uh, trivia question for both of you guys. I don't think this is too difficult, but who is the most nominated person alive? Scorsese at this point. Nope. Nope. No? Oh. Nope. Um, should be a, it could be Williams, John Williams. No. Nope. It is. Okay. Not 91 years old, and this week uh, he just recently got his 54th Oscar nomination. Right. And wow. the reason I bring this up is, and this is on my to do list for, fe for February. Uh, the Boise Phil yes. is going to have an yes, evening yes, yes. of John Williams music where they put clips of, well, the movies of our lives up on a big screen at the Morrison Center with the live Philharmonic. And they do a matinee and evening performance on February 17th. And uh, if you haven't been to the Philharmonic lately, I think this is a really good icebreaker because you instantly, it's just, a, it's an evening of sense memory and it is quite beautiful. Oh man, I'm excited for that. Uh, I will actually check that out. <laughs> uh, speaking of films, uh, over in our neighboring state uh, of Utah, uh, they just wrapped up the Sundance Film Festival. Uh, it's, the, it's a big launching pad for independent film. But we also have our own film festival in Sun Valley. And George, my understanding is that you're a, uh, a, f a frequent <laughs> presence in that film festival? I drew the short straw uh, a number of years ago, which turns out to be the, the best straw. Yeah, so, I was going to say, uh, for, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> but, well, I got to tell you, I mean, 13 years ago, uh, it was a pretty modest affair. Mm. Uh, but then uh, Jodie Foster uh, walked through the door and she was the first coffee talk, uh, what they call coffee talks. And for some crazy reason, each year they ask me back to be the guy who sits in the chair next to, well, you know, Amy Poehler, uh, Josh Brolin this past year, and in a couple of weeks, Annette Bening, who just got nominated mm -hmm. for an Oscar. And Foster herself was just uh, nominated for Foster, Naya. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> but, uh, um, and also David O. Russell uh, mm. has also been uh, uh, an early, um, they've announced him as an honoree. So, and of course, he's brought us uh, American Hustle and mm -hmm. Silver Linings Playbook. And they're just starting to to drop titles. They have told me a couple of other names, which I'm not allowed to share just yet. 
uh, but they'll announce uh, in the coming days. It's a lot of fun, and the thing that, uh, because I, I go to a couple of these festivals, the thing that, that I love is it's absolute total access. There are no, quote unquote, velvet ropes mm -hmm. where you can get coffee next to, and then Clint Eastwood is either in front or in back of you. No joke. <laughs> Seriously, uh, and uh, and that's kind of cool. So, uh, and I've had a, a, a few memories, but it's not just because of what I do for a living. Uh, it's stunning uh, how much access the audience has to filmmakers. Mm -hmm. It's funny. It, does it, that, it strikes me that that's likely a function of Sun Valley being a, a second or third home destination for many of these uh, filmmakers. A hundred percent. You know, if if any of them have Oakland. kids and they say, "Hey, we can get you." Uh, accommodations and ski passes, mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, chances are they lean in and say, oh, okay, well, maybe I will come. Let's say I'm a first timer. What are your, what are your sort of like survival pack tips here? Like, uh, you know, pack water bottles, like what's, what's going on? Like what's, what's your, what's your uh, advice here? So a couple things, first of all, and I, I can't say this often enough, the coffee talks, which I think, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm there, but I think it's like, yeah, that, that's where the stars are. They're totally a hundred percent free. It's like, yeah, you get, you've got it, you've got to go, and they do them Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and uh, it's, 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 you know, if that's your jam, I, you know, if you, if you want to see, and, and they're usually pretty fun, emotional, crazy moments, uh, but they do street parties every night. Uh, they do little cafes where you can just kind of walk in, and people are doing little Q and As with some, you know, Oscar nominated filmmakers, but there's a lot of, um, I think, Oscar nominees in, in the making. There's a lot of mm. young filmmakers there. And when you can get FaceTime uh, with someone who writes screenplays for a living, that's exactly what you want to do. And I say this all the time to uh, the folks at Boise State. It's like, oh my gosh, you're, you know, students need to be here. They can get yeah. FaceTime here. And so... You know, you just go, you can make a day trip of it. Uh, it's pretty darn accessible whether you just get a single ticket or you get some variation of passes, but uh, there's there's quite a few free events. Awesome. Looks like we have a lot to, to tackle with in February. Uh, we have um, we have zoos, we have uh, Keep It Undie Runs, we have uh, film festivals, we have movies, we have cooking we have we have a lot of hanging out time. Yeah. Uh, before I let the both of you go, and thank you so much for this conversation, I just I want to put you on the spot. Um, Best picture. Who's getting it? <sighs> it's gonna be Oppenheimer, and I'm gonna be so mad. What do you think should have or should get it? <laughs> um, I actually don't know. I haven't really thought about that. I feel like I've kind of stepped away from thinking about who should win as much as pay just paying attention to the nominations. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't I know. You're gonna say the who do you think? Huh? <laughs> I thought you were gonna say the holdovers. <laughs> I love the holdovers. I don't know if it's. I don't know. It got nominated, which is a pretty big deal. It got yeah. a nomination. That's yeah. that's that's a lot. It's yeah. Giamatti's window. Like he yeah. he's he's on. The oh room. yeah, uh, I yeah, hope. Yeah. yeah. Yes. George, how about you? Uh, what's going to and what should win? Uh, it's going to be Oppenheimer, and I'm going to be fine with that. <laughs> no. You know, um, ex exact same with me. Exact same um, with and, me. Really? But here, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, but here's why. That movie could have gone sideways a hundred times, and I don't think it did. The first, in spite of the fact it's more than three hours, I thought the first two hours just flew by. I was stunned by it. So um, that said, I haven't guessed the best picture winner in quite some time. <laughs> 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 well, this this might be the year because it's it's often how to lose. Yeah, uh, Blake, George, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me. Thanks, Nick. Happy February, everyone. Happy February. Thanks, Nick. That's all for today here on CityCast Boise. If you enjoyed the show, why not tell a friend and subscribe to our Hey Boise newsletter? We'll be back tomorrow morning with more local stories from around the city. Bye. We didn't even get to the flute fest. That was a flute fest? <laughs> what? No, 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 no. There's a flute fest in February. <laughs>